Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here, wearing an appropriate t-shirt that I purchased yesterday. I have left the accommodations of the resort I am staying in. I'm still staying there this evening. However, I have ventured off property into Hilton Head proper to a residential community by the name of Leamington for the first stop of the day. I'm inviting you to join me for a stroll around Hilton Head Island. I have never been in this neck of the woods, this area before. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? It feels great out here. Probably about 50 degrees. I am wearing my hoodie. However, with the sun kind of beaming on my face and not a lot of wind, it is pleasant. Let's take a look at this lighthouse and start the day. Known as the Hilton Head Rear Range Lighthouse. Back in 1879 or 1880, depending on which of those two dates, probably between that, that probably a year to create it. 92 feet above sea level, was visible from 15 miles away and once served to guide shipping vessels in Port Royal, Port Royal Sound. The tower was once part of a complex that included a keeper, keeper's house and a forward beacon. Very interesting. There are a couple of lighthouses or more here in Hilton Head, and I might venture over to another one. I had a few things on my radar, but really no rhyme or reason or what I'm going to be covering. And this is a private neighborhood community and not too difficult to get into, but there are a couple of checkpoints you got to go through and you have to let them know. I had to explain in great detail that I was going in here to look at this relic of the past that you can see through the trees. So if you make this venture, be prepared to explain yourself on what's going on. But they're very, very, very nice. They let me through. Look at this thing. I'm getting some lampy Peach Dragon vibes right now. Also, as a recording of this, it is Tuesday, January 11, 2022. And this is the Live Oak right next to the golf course and next to the tower itself. There's some information right here. Well, I say tower, but it's a lighthouse. This Live Oak, a diameter of nine feet the age of the tree back in survey back in 2019 states that it's almost 450 years old and one of the oldest living trees on this island. And that right there, this brick embankment, is a cistern. A cistern was built alongside the oil house with a collection of rainwater to support the lighthouse's operations, holding up to 3,000 500 gallons of water. Very unique looking, is it not? A couple other brick buildings here, some palm trees. And more info about the Hilton Head Rear Range Lighthouse here in this community. A thing of beauty. As the only, as the island's only functioning lighthouse, started by troops in 1863, first lit in 1881. stands between the 15th and 5th holes of the Arthur Hills Golf Course. Commonly referred to as the Leamington Lighthouse, which is the neighborhood it's in. Put on the National Register of Historic Places back in 1985. It has withstood numerous hurricanes, storms, and earthquakes. What? An earthquake around these parts back in 1886. 
there was an earthquake in South Carolina on the island of Hilton Head. And this withstood it. Whew, it is brisk now that I'm under in the shade and that wind is kicking. It is brisk. There are a couple of golfers over there. One of the holes there. You can see some gentlemen out there playing a, a round of golf. This is the oil house. And I'm very thankful always for these information placards that are here. Constructed back in 1892. Stored 450 five gallon cans of oil. According to legend, the lighthouse keeper passed away of a heart attack, bringing oil to the tower during a hurricane. Probably the hurricane mentioned on the other one. And his daughter Caroline continued his work but then she eventually perished out of exhaustion. She was wearing a blue dress and sightings of a lady wearing a blue dress have been reported on dark, rainy days. That's fascinating. Oh, look at that bird up there. A bird just, just kind of like flew in. I love stories like that. Very, very, very fascinating. Watching that bird circling around. You looking at me, bird? Are you looking for the lady in the blue dress? Got to come back when it's rainy. On a dark, rainy night, bird. That's what it says right here. And it appears as if the way to the top is a staircase that goes right up the middle. To be in pretty good shape to climb to the top of that thing. Also, don't want to forget about the live oak tree that's here. That is a thing of beauty. Especially for how old it is. Alright, going to continue on around the island. See what I can find. One more quick fact. It was decommissioned back in 1932. Stated there at the bottom. Drove a few miles into an area by the name of Sea Pines. Came up to another little checkpoint. Cost nine dollars to get into this development. I've noticed there's just a lot of little checkpoints all over the island. You either have to go through and explain why you're going in there or in this case pay nine dollars. But I'm heading over to some ruins and on the way over there Noticing this says caution horses may bite But I believe that all the horses that are over there are preoccupied with a little chow or chowing down on some hay and a meal and Not over here against the fence line There'll be no biting of me today because they are not in my general vicinity but Yeah, there's a lot of horses like a, a little ranch stable house over there Probably two dozen horses here on property. There's three horses over there that they're not eating anything. They're just on their own. They're the loners. Those three horses over there on that end. They're out there in the sun. Yeah, stay in the sun, horses. It is very beautiful through here. A canopy of tree limbs covering over the road. Very scenic, beautiful drive. I love it. I have found the pathway into the woods, which will lead me to the Stony Baynard Ruins, the center of Braddock's Point Plantation in the first half of the 18th century, created or lived in by Captain John Saucy Jack Stony. He built the main house starting back in 1793. And this is what I'm going to be looking for off in the woods. Now to give a general overview of Hilton Head Island, this is the island itself. I am all the way over here on this corner end, right here. Stony Baynard Home.
Got a little pathway and some stairs. See if we can find these ruins. Oh, I'm seeing something up here. Definitely can make out the sides of the home. And there's this big piece of infrastructure here as well. This very tall piece. You see where the windows were. A little more information here. Ruins compared to the possible height of the original house. This is a good little detail. First floor wall, which is the big piece I just showed. Estimated original roof line with possible chimneys. This is called tabby debris. So you can see how big the house was, what is left, the existing ruins. Based on that, And obviously you can't climb over there. Just have to use your use your imagination and just picture people living here. Going to sleep here, fixing meals here, living their lives. This is also on the National Register of Historic Places. It has a circa 1790 inscription on it. And doing a little more reading on that information stand. The basement was where these windows are. So the first floor did not start until right there. Right where you can see that line is, was where the first floor. So this was all the basement, and then it went up to the first floor. So there's not a whole heck of a lot of the walls left above the basement, except for that one big chunk right there. And there's a tree limb, or not a tree limb, but a tree stump. The tree's been cut down that, you know, since this was built, the tree grew up through the middle of it. And it's made of a very unique substance. You can see there how it's not concrete, obviously. You can see into the walls. Hello, bird. I don't see you, but I certainly hear you. Made out of something called tabby. The name Tabby comes from a Span the Spanish tapia for mud wall. That's why it looks the way it, it does inside the wall itself. And there's not just these ruins, but there appears to be just to the side of the homestead some more over here of another, another foundation building. There is a residential neighborhood right outside these woods. That's why you're hearing all the activity, some construction activity. Way over here is a kitchen chimney from another house that stood here. Look at this. Can really get a little more up close and personal with what it's made out of there. It almost looks like, like seashells that are down in there as well to make up this chimney. The remains of a chimney. And continued on about a mile down the road, a little parking area here at Harbor Town. You can see there's a bench right there, a swinging, a swinging seat in the tree limb. Harbor Town, this is called, and there's a lighthouse here as well. Hello, crow. 
to where the lighthouse is. I know it's in Harbor Town, but I don't have any specific directions on which way to walk to find it. You get me like a bird's eye perspective. You don't have to fly away, but when you've been up there, have you seen the lighthouse around? If you could just point me in the right direction, bird, that'd be good. Okay, thank you. Bird was not much help. Pretty sure the bird knew, but just didn't just didn't want to share the info. Now I know why the bird didn't want to give me any hints, because I was very, very close. I could have found it on my own. I mean it was just, just a few feet away. I'm putting I'm putting words in the bird's mouth now, I know. But. There's the lighthouse. It appears to be someone up there. I think he can go up in it. A little statue here, eating a sandwich and reading a book. It's called Out to Lunch. The artist here named this Out to Lunch. Right there, back in the 70s. This was placed here, or at least created. They are doing quite a bit of construction on the exterior below the lighthouse, but there was a sign that said that even during all the, the maintenance and construction, that it is open. So I'm gonna see what the admission is and try to get up to the top. It is 114 steps up to the top. 114 steps up many stories and on the way up, there's like a little museum with a few information photos and whatnot on the side. And once you reach the very tip top, got the flag up top here. And then you can look out over the water. I am up here. Of course, some of the rules here don't throw anything off. And whatever you do, don't look out. It is windy. Got the Harbor Town Pier right there. Ooh, it is brisk up here. Very brisk. Just about five dollar admission to climb up to the top of this. Well worth it. Get up in a lighthouse. Can't go up in a lighthouse every day. Nice breeze up here. A very nice breeze. Nice and gusty. Probably put this hoodie on. Put the hoodie up. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Whew. Cool up here. There's me. There's my reflection. Hello. Now gonna venture about 12 or 13 miles across to the other side of the island to the next spot. I just learned that Fort Howell is not off of Fort Howell Drive. I assumed it was. Turned down there, went to a private neighborhood with another on-staff person who informed me that there was no historical significant forts back in that area. But I eventually found it. It's about a mile down another road. And there's a little information right up here. The cross streets, for anyone looking for Fort Howell, is on the corner of Beach City Road and Dillon Road. Right on the, right near that corner. Fort Howell, named for Joshua Blackwood Howell, 1806 to 1864. 
the village just east of here had been established by Ormsby M. Mitchell in the fall of 1862. It was deeded to the island, to Hilton Head Island Land Trust back in 1993 to ensure its public preservation as a historic site for current and future generations to enjoy. And it had a moat. Look at that, it had a moat that went all the way around it. Or at least in the front, a front moat. And it's located over here off in the woods. Now the creator of these art figures is Mary Ann Browning Ford. This way to the fort. Flag over here. The thirty second U.S. Infantry. Camp Baird in August of eighteen sixty four. Colonel George Baird was charged with setting up an encampment for his regiment. The encampment was named Camp Baird and was located where the golf course is now. Palmetto Hall, near Palmetto Hall. And for the namesake of the fort, Joshua Blackwood Howell. This represents him. This is a artistic representation of Mr. Howell. Harriet Tubman. Kind of neat how they have all these all set up through here. And this is George Baird. This is back in here a ways. Kind of curious if there's going to be any sort of remains or foundation left. Okay, doesn't appear to be a lot of foundation or structure that is left. You are here. So that means I'm standing right at where the entrance was. I've already passed the moat. Ah! That was the moat. I just walked over that bridge. That was where the moat was. And I am now standing inside of its walls. The exterior were, featured a moat and wooden palisade, sharpened logs driven into the ground to slow advancing troops. That might have been a personal plane. It was a small plane. Approaching the North Bastion now. Towards the rear. Right there. So the end of it would be facing that way. So it wasn't too large. I'm kind of towards the end. So let's say the end is there. And then the moat. You know, within eye view down that way. It was all in here many, many, many years ago. And inside this little box here, you open it up and they have 
little pamphlets that you can take with you. And shown down here, another place that is on the National Park, National Register of Historic Places. Place back in 2011. That's pretty cool. This replica of the 1864 flag was donated back in 2016. That's the one here on the entryway end. Driving around a little more, found this historical marker. The William Simmons House, built in 1930. Typical in materials and methods constructed of those built in the South Carolina Sea Islands in the mid 20th century. It was built on land bought after 1865 by William, William Simmons, who enlisted in the 21st U.S. Colored Infantry as Irish Sherman. William Simmons' granddaughter, Georgiana Bryan, built this house in 1930 for her brother, William Dewey Simmons. It illustrates everyday life and persistence of Gula culture in an African-American farm community until after a bridge was built from the mainland in 1956. And here it sits, the little house. On Gum Tree Road. I still have my so I have my directions on in my pocket. Gotta love it when that happens. All kind of history here being preserved. And over here is a trailer of some sort. Not only the trailer behind it, but it also an artistic painting of the trailer. It says you can't go past this point. It says, site being renovated in process. Do not touch anything over here. This is as far as I'm gonna go, but this is reading over there, it says the Great Dane Trailer, D-A-N-E Trailer, Rena's house. As I get a little bit closer, as long as I don't go over the area here. In 1947, Great Dane trailer exhibited here was the home of Rena Walters, founder of the Gula Museum of Hilton Head. Fire destroyed the original home, so she utilized this to live in. In all my recollection, I cannot think of a a community that has so many private neighborhoods. I just went to another that I couldn't get in. I wanted to check something out. They wouldn't let me in because I didn't live there. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to explore Hilton Head Island. I have now arrived at the Zion Chapel of Ease. The chapel of St. Luke's Parish was established in 1767, built of wood after 1786. The families worship there but in 1867, the chapel was destroyed. And right over here, reading up on a little more information here, it says, obviously, the church is no longer standing. However, in 1846, William Eddings Baynard, who was in the oldest structure still standing on Hilton Head, right there. That's from 1846, the oldest structure still standing on the entire island. So you can make out any of the other dates that are here. Wow, look at this. 1784? 
I'm reading that correctly? 1836. Eighteen twenty one. This is right off of one of the main roads, one of the very busy intersect, very busy thoroughfares, just off to the side over here. The inscription on the front says integrity and uprightness written across there. W.M. E. Baynard. As I pull back into the area where I am staying for the evening, right across the little boat basin there, King Neptune is standing there. He's a full, probably about 20 foot tall, King Neptune there with his scepter. And that's going to do it for today. Tried to find a little bit of history on Hilton Head Island, some non-touristy stuff. You know, I went up into the lighthouse, that was a little touristy. But tried to find a little more historical stuff. It's tough to find because a lot of places are on private property and in residential neighborhoods that have little stations out front that ask you what you're doing. But I got pretty lucky. I'd say probably most of the places except one I got into. I just had to explain what I was doing. but. Each place. I've never, I don't think I've ever been to an area or a community quite like this before. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.